We're here at the kickoff to the auto show season in Frankfurt, Germany. We're going to preview the best cars of 2020 coming to showrooms this year. That's right, there's a huge range of debuts here. Land Rover has a new Defender, the first one in decades, and yes, it is coming to the US. Volkswagen is going electric. Mercedes has another new SUV. BMW has another new ridiculous grill. This one looks like a walrus, don't miss that. Audi has a, a super hot wagon that will be coming to America. And Lamborghini has another hypercar that's even faster, even more expensive, and frankly, even sillier than normal. It's a big show. Let's split up, meet back at the end. Now, normally we finish pieces like this at auto shows, lamenting the cars that we can't get in the US. And normally that includes a hot Audi like this RS6 wagon, but no more. Early next year, this, the latest generation Audi RS6 will be offered in the US. That's right, a hot wagon bound for Uncle Sam. It'll be complete with a four liter twin turbo V8, 591 horsepower, zero to 60 in well under four seconds. Ample speed and ample performance to scare any kind of dog you put in this ample trunk. Now, I love this thing. I think it looks fabulous and I'm sure it'll be a hoot to drive. I've driven just about every other RS6 and they've always been hugely entertaining. But I have a sneaky suspicion that this might be one of those cars that auto journalists like me wax lyrical about only for nobody to actually buy it. So if you've about $120,000 burning a hole in your pocket, please think about a hot wagon. Otherwise you'll make us all look stupid. But if you think that a wagon really is a bit too cool for you, then Audi is also debuting here in Frankfurt, the RS7. It has the same engine, the same performance, also looks pretty good. But as you can see, it just doesn't have room for the Labrador. Lamborghini's here with the Sion and it's heavy on numbers, so deep breath. It uses the V12 out of the event store paired with the 48 volt hybrid system. And it's the first use of a super capacitor in a hybrid. 0 to 60 in less than three seconds, top speed of 218 miles an hour. And the big numbers, here we go. Price, $3.6 million. And even if you have that money, good luck because all 63 are sold. There's also a new Land Rover Defender, which is the star of the show. Check out the video right here. Now, having been stung by criticism of the humongous grill on the new 7 Series, BMW has decided to uh, double down with this, the 4 Series concept, complete with a massive front grill that can only be described as um, walrus-like. This actually previews the 4 Series Coupe and the i4 electric coupe, which should be on sale by the end of 2020. And we reckon it's about 85% production reality. The designers have certainly gone for shock and, um, well, I'm just not sure about the orbit. After the walrus face of the 4 Series Coupe concept, the latest production version of the X6 looks almost uh, understated, elegant even. The X6 has always been a bit of a niche player for BMW. Based on the X5, it combines coupe styling with SUV dynamics and it's for those who are willing to sacrifice ultimate practicality for a bit more style. It'd be available with either an inline six or a V8 engine, both of which of course are turbocharged, and it'll be on sale in the US by the end of the year. Now, personally, I've never been a big fan of the X6. It's a bit too, well, vulgar for my taste, but you know what? For what it is, I kinda like this one. Here at Mercedes, they rolled out a new version of an existing model, as well as an absolutely stunning concept. Let's start with SUVs. My favorite in the Mercedes lineup is the GLE class, and they wrote off the AMG GLE 53. That's an inline six with a 48 volt mild hybrid system, puts out 429 horsepower, which is pretty respectable for that class. It's not a real top of the line AMG, it's one of their kind of mid-grade AMGs, just to give it a little bit of a boost. There's also the EQS concept right behind me, which is the sleek, wonderful luxury sedan, and it's all electric. Power output is 469 horsepower, and if you ask me, they just put Tesla on notice. There's a new Mini Cooper as well, and it's all electric, which makes sense for the small footprint. We do have some concerns though. Initially, estimates only give it about 150 miles of range. 
Now, Edmunds superfans might remember that I actually drove the Byton M-Bike prototype a few weeks ago in Northern California, but here in Frankfurt they've taken the wraps off the production reality. It'll be on sale in China next year and hitting the US shores in early 2021. It's built in China, but it's actually been designed and engineered in California. Now, the M-Bike's obvious rival is the Tesla Model 3. This car will start from around $45 thousand dollars. There'll be two different versions, a 270 horsepower with a single motor and a 402 horsepower twin motor with all-wheel drive. This giant screen is undeniably the m -Byte signature feature and the most controversial aspect of the car. It measures a colossal 48 inches across and when I drove the prototype it's very conscious just how high it sits in the car. It's almost like being in a helicopter, you sort of peep over the top. It'll be interesting to see how Byton manages the software so it's not too distracting. Everything's controlled by two touchscreens, one here on the steering wheel and another there in the centre console. And then in this show car, there's another two screens in the back for the rear passengers. Once you get past all the gadgetry though, the interior is actually quite conventional. And this is a big car, it sits somewhere between the Audi Q5 and the Q7. So there's plenty of space for five adults and lots of luggage. Talk to Byton insiders and they freely admit that this car will be judged on its strength as a product. They won't be relying on a kind of cult of personality like some rivals in, say, California that I might mention. There are some very clever people behind Byton, people who work for some of the top manufacturers across the world. They freely admit that establishing a, a new car company is a huge undertaking, but having done the prototype, I'm convinced that Byton and the m -Byte will be a proper contender. Porsche's latest evolution of its iconic 911 is the 992. Just like the Carrera S, it's based on, it has a 443 horsepower flat six in the back, and it's the latest to fill in the 911 portfolio. New for the 4S Cabrio this year though, is you can order it with a sports suspension, which means you can enjoy all that spirited handling while getting a 10. Porsche has proven you can get sports car performance out of a crossover. For 2020, the Macan Turbo gets a power increase to 434 horsepower, and it's getting it from a 2.9 liter twin turbo V6, which is smaller than last year. We haven't been that much of a fan of the way that particular engine sounds in other Volkswagen products, but with a sport exhaust, that might all change with Macan Turbo. One of the nice things about coming to European shows like Frankfurt is you get to see all the cars that they get here that we don't get in the US, including this, the new generation Ford Puma. Now the original Puma in the 1990s was really cool little sport coupe designed by Ian Callum of Jaguar and Aston Martin fame. This though is a sort of weird little crossover that looks like, um, well it looks like that. Don't think we'll miss it. This on the other hand, the electric Honda E is a car that I think we really will miss. For me, this is Japanese design at its best. Just look at the interior and the exterior. And although it's super small, I'd love one of these in LA. We've spoken to American Honda though, and apparently to meet all the federal regulations and legislation would mean ruining its concept car looks. So it's not coming. Rubbish. The big news from Volkswagen here in Frankfurt is an electric vehicle they're actually going to make. Having teasers for years with everything from a, a bus to a beach buggy, here is a production reality. It's called the ID3 and it's about the size of Volkswagen Golf. It debuts a new VW badge as they try and move on from Dieselgate and a really funky interior that I kind of like. Of course, when I say heading for production, I mean, of course, here in Europe. Volkswagen reckons that Americans don't buy cars anymore, so it won't be sold in the US. But this will. Hiding in this semi-opaque box is an SUV electric concept that will be on sale in the US as early as the end of next year. Now, at the moment, it's called the ID Cross, that's C-R-O-Z-Z, -Z, but even some people in Volkswagen, but it's a bit of a silly name that'll probably change for production. It's based on the same platform as the ID3, what Volkswagen internally calls MEB. But this is a, a bigger vehicle, it's sort of Tiguan size, and it's offered with a, a motor at the rear developing 201 horsepower, or you can add a motor at the front, great all wheel drive, and 302 horsepower. Range should be well over 200 miles, which is very much entry to the club these days. Volkswagen's determined to price its electric cars competitively, so we expect the entry-level price to start with a three, somewhere around 
$35,000. Rivals will be include the, the new Tesla Model Y, should it appear next year, and Ford's upcoming Mustang-inspired electric SUV. That should be a great group test. Woo! That was a big show. Alistair, what were the highlights for you? Well, I'm not just saying this because my British origins, but I think Land Rover's done a great job with the new Defender. We got some sneak preview images last week and we thought it looked a, a bit soft, but actually here in the metal, the proportions, the stance of it, the physicality, I think it's great. And fifty to $80,000, not cheap, but maybe cheaper than what we're expecting. I think a lot of people get out of their Jeep Wranglers and into a Defender. Couldn't agree more. For my money, I really like the Mercedes-Benz Vision EQS concept. It's sleek, it's futuristic, it's all electric, it's the future. It looks beautiful. Other end of the EV spectrum, Volkswagen's getting big into electric. We'll see the fruits of that as early as next year in the US. But for me, star of the show, actually a hot wagon, finally coming to the US, the Audi RS6. Yes, $120,000, but if you've got the money, here's a car that'll do pretty much everything. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Hit subscribe, and we'll see you next from the LA Auto Show. This November.